we are taking a look at the remainder theorem. And so ultimately we wanna know, does x to the fourth minus four x to the third minus seven x squared plus eight x plus six, if I were to divide that by x minus five, will x minus five fit into that? A shortcut that we can use like we were talking about, if I have a number like 75 and I say, does five fit into 75? I don't actually have to do the division. I know the number ends in a zero or a five, so five fits in. Or if I have an even number, I know that two fits in. So what we're gonna do is look for a little pattern here. I'm gonna start off by just taking the number five, which is known as the K value, and I'm going to substitute that into my function. So every X becomes a five. Then I go ahead and find the answer to five to the fourth, etc. And it turns out that that equals negative four. The significance of what we found is this is the same thing as the remainder. If I were to divide this polynomial, this polynomial by x minus the number I substituted in, what I'm gonna find is that the remainder after doing this division is this number. So I'm gonna pre-put in here, because I already know that Plugging in five gave me negative four, but knowing the connection, I also know after I do this long division or synthetic division, whichever you choose, the remainder is going to be negative four. Now we're dividing by X minus K here. So if I'm dividing by X minus K, you can use the shortcut for division. We don't have to do the long division. Just a very, very quick review of that. Okay, I'm setting up my uh, division here. The number that goes here, if I'm dividing by x minus five, positive five goes there. And then underneath, I'm using the coefficients of each of the terms. So from the original, I put those in blue. So I have one, negative four, negative seven, eight and six. So I'm gonna put those under here. Do remember that if there was a missing term, like if this would have said x to the fourth minus four x cubed plus eight x, I would need a placeholder and make that zero x to the second power. Okay, but we've got our coefficients. So step one in division is drop it down then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So I'm going to drop down the number one, then multiply, five times one is five, negative four plus five is one, five times one is five, negative seven and five, make negative two, Five times negative two is negative 10. Eight and negative 10 make negative two. Five times negative two is negative 10. And six and negative 10 make negative four. Not a surprise. Okay, and these are the coefficients on our answer. So the answer to this divided by this is gonna be one degree less than x to the fourth. So we know it's gonna be an x to the third. So this makes one, one x to the third plus one x to the second minus two x's minus two. And the last number is your remainder. And your remainder always goes over what you were originally dividing by. So we have plus and then negative four over x minus five. This right here is known as your quotient. 
So my x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 2 is my quotient. But the takeaway here, the remainder theorem, is that if I divide by x minus this number, I'm going to get a remainder that's the same as simply plugging 5 into this equation. And this is a huge help because eventually we've been factoring things that are like four terms, two terms with quadratics and we're factoring them. But what if all of a sudden, instead of saying factor x squared minus four, which is x plus two times x minus two, like factor x to the 17th plus six x to the 16th plus some huge polynomial and I say factor it, well, in this particular one right here, if I said factor this, I just found out that x minus 5 is a factor, and so that's going to be one of the factors.